over here. Honored dignitaries gracing this august gathering, treasured invitees, and all the startling hearts in the audience. I, Asha, on behalf of Hon KIIT and KISS, and on my own behalf, extend you all a hearty welcome to the 18th Foundation Day of KIIT, deemed to be University. Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology, KIIT, deemed to be university, is among the most prestigious of India's universities. The youngest to be tagged as institution of eminence, attracting students from all over India and more than 65 countries to pursue professional and technical education. It has built its reputation as the most student-friendly university anchored in the principle of compassion and humanity. Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology, KIIT, deemed to be university, is among the most prestigious of India's universities. The youngest to be tagged as institution of eminence, attracting students from all over India and more than 65 countries to pursue professional and technical education. It has built its reputation as the most student-friendly university anchored in the principle of compassion and humanity. May I now request our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Bisoy Parujwali sir and Honorable Professor Ashutu Saman sir to kindly light the ceremonial lamp to embark the pious beginning of the event with the grace of the Almighty. Please sir.
thank you sir for your welcoming words thank you sir for your welcoming words now i would like to request our staff coordinators to present flower bouquet to our guests as a token of love on behalf of whole kiit and kiss fraternity it is my profound privilege to welcome the educationist philanthropist and the social worker who campaigns for empowerment through quality education honorable member of parliament founder of kiit and kiss professor achyuti samanta sir to kindly give the welcome address so good morning everybody present here today is a very good day for all of us and it is a very pious day for all of us 16th february so on this occasion we have with us our honorable chief guest for this occasion respected mr bisho arajuli representative and country director world food program india present on the dais similarly on the dais the vice chancellor of kit university dr sushmita samant and also pro vice chancellor of kit university professor sanjeev singh and registrar of kit university professor gananjan mahanti similarly we have on the audience side our respected himanshu bal ji the state head the same world food program and all the other respected senior officials accompanying the country director mr parajuli present on the audience side and also our vice chancellor of kis university professor deepak behra pro vice chancellor of kit university professor dr cbk mahant is also sitting there registrar of kis university is there and also <coughs> our chairman advisory committee mr tejender sandhu ji his office is in delhi for kit and kis suraj kumar all sitting on the audience side and particularly it's a very good coincidence we have with us respected ram avtar ji or ram avtar jhakar ji who is the ceo of the volleyball federation of india present on the audience side and also the <laughs> respected anil choudhary ji secretary general from the um, volleyball federation of india and also all the other office bearers present on the audience side from the volleyball federation of india uh, present here and also we have with us our all the respected dean directors and senior functionaries and all the respected faculty members all the respected and administrative staffs and also other invited guests those who are present here and uh, i hope very few lovable kitians foreign students present here and respected press persons both from electronic and print media and all the other respected others members be it staff and the well wishers connected with us in virtual mode and particularly my lovable kitians and almoni kitians those who are connected with us in virtual mode on this very auspicious occasion so thank you very much for all of you for <coughs> joining this uh, day 16th february which is very important for kit university particularly uh, virtually or actually you are connected today we have the um very good two occasions that is <coughs> once is the foundation day of kit universities and also the foundation day lecture 
by the eminent personality of the globe, that the Mr. Biso Parajuli, representing country director of the UN World Food Program. And another on occasion also, signing of letter of intent between the World Food Program and KISS, just after this, is also here. So we have the two good occasions <laughs> here present. So at the outset, as a founder of Kit and Kiss, it's my great pleasure to extend heartiest welcome to all of you, those who are present here in the August gathering. Definitely today, I have told, is a very good day, an auspicious day uh, for this Kit in both cities. It is 18th Foundation Day, that is the 2004 and 2022, 18th Foundation Day of Kit Universities. But we are running 25 years of KIT, starting from 97, 2022. So that's why this year we are celebrating year long, Silver Jubilee celebration for both KIT and KISS. Uh, in the theme, KIT, KISS is one, that is KIO. KKIO, KIT KISS is one, with this theme, we have started celebrating this year long Silver Jubilee celebration. Because uh, as you all know that both Kit and Kiss started in a rented house in a very small way in 1992-93. But 97 is our base year. We started engineering MCMB, all the graduate program. So that's why we are used to take the 97 as the base year. And to this year, we are reaching the 25 years, the Silver Jubilee. As KIT is a very vast organization with many activities going on, both KIT and KISS. That's why we have been celebrating this Silver Jubilee year completely one year, December 21 to December 22. We are celebrating in the theme KIT and KISS. And as we know, suppose some of you must be at the age of 25. So in the age of 25, one becomes very vibrant, energetic, and also dynamic, bold, everything. Similarly, KIT at present, in the same line, very energetic, dynamic, aggressive, very popular, household name, <laughs> everything in these 25 years. And another one coincidence, I am very much happy that I started both the organization at the age of 25. When I was only 25 years of old, I started both the organizations with only 5,000 rupees in my pocket into a rented house. So now, it is now another 25 years of kit. So anyhow, in this context, I would like to, at the outset, to express my good wishes to all of you. Then I'll also, though I'm taking a little bit more time, I hope country director is a little bit free no more functions after this. So, because as I am a founder, I have to touch everybody. If I will not touch even a small man, the small man will be unhappy that the founder did not take my name. So I should be excused if I am not taking names of many people <laughs> present here or many people, those are virtually connected with me. So anyhow, <coughs> um, uh, before uh, going to Little bit about this Foundation Day. It's my great pleasure first to extend the heartiest welcome to our honorable chief guest who is sitting on the dais, who has come all the way from Delhi to grace this occasion. Because just before few days, I had met him with my dear Aditya and extended invitation and request to visit this kit and kiss. At that time, he could not believe what is kit and kiss. But now, after visiting 45 minutes by car in the entire kit and kiss, you will listen to him. What is his impression? So anyhow, sir, I am, it's my great pleasure uh, as a founder of Kit and Kiss at the outset to extend my heartiest welcome to you on behalf of the entire staff, students, management of two universities, Kit University and Kiss University, and also on my behalf I welcome you. Because you know, wherever you'll go, you will be welcomed by only one university. You, you will not be welcomed by two universities the way it is here. So, this <coughs> Mr. Biswa Parajuli 
United Nations World Food Program representative and country director to India, having 35 years of distinguished experience in development, humanitarian affairs, diplomacy, fundraising, and also management in over 10 countries in Asia, Middle East, and Africa, and World Food Program headquarters in Rome. He has worked in various capacities and accomplished many seemingly impossible tasks with his humility, sincerity, and steadfast dedication to humanitarian service. So, on this occasion, I once again welcome you, sir, to this great organization. And at the same time, it's my great pleasure to cite another one example that I would like to quickly underscore two important links in Kit and Kiss and World Food Program. That is, Her Excellency Miss Arthrin Kojin, Executive Director of the World Food Program, Rome, visited this kit and kiss on 13th January 2016. She was also conferred with the honorary delayed degree by Kit University. She was so impressed with the kiss model. I can quote her, you are the future of India as well as the world. Dr. Samanth has given you a tremendous platform to dream. KISS is the right platform to fulfill your dreams, unquote. So, during her visit, he, she said this sentence to the 30,000 children at KISS. And in reciprocation also, she has invited me and I also visited the headquarters at Rome and had a very good chit chat with her. And she is a very <coughs> nice lady. So in this context, these are some of the uh, ties with World Food Program. And today, these ties will be permanent and concretized after signing MOU uh, of World Food Program and KISS just after this meeting. <laughs> it's my great pleasure also to extend heartiest welcome to Himangshu Balji, uh, the state representative here, and all the other officials accompanying the country director. And also my um, heartiest welcome to all of you, those who are, again, I'm not taking everybody's name, killing much time because we are here to listen to our honorable chief guest, but I am taking much time. So it's my great pleasure particularly to extend heartiest welcome to all the great personality from the Volleyball Federation of India, where I am the president of the Volleyball Federation of India. I am today ha so happy, it is a coincidence that uh, they, all the stalwart like Secretary General, CEO and others uh, senior members are considerably in the campus. They all attend this, our foundation, the lectures. So I welcome you all, sir. Thank you very much for joining and inspiring all of us. And as, <coughs> so I should start from the, because you see, you need, you know that, um, no, KIT started with, from the scratch, I can say. Nowhere I have seen such type of organization which was started by a man like me and in a rented house, scratch, etc. And entire things has come up, seeing is believing. For the entire growth and whatever things we have today with us, I owe entire things to Almighty and God. It is the blessings of Lord Jagannath and Lord Hanuman, those who have created the entire things and maintaining it very nicely without any flaw. And I am particularly just an instrument to implement the things even I don't know how all these things would have come up so quickly, so nicely. Though we have tremendous contribution, not only in education, health, social service, but also in sports, art, literature, culture, film, media. There is not a spiritualism also. There is not a single sector which is left with kit and kiss. So I hope this is not at all possible without the blessings of Almighty or the Lord Jagannath. And all these things have been possible. That's why both Kit and Kiss have become the household name, not only in Odisha, but also in many parts of the entire country and many parts of the globe. That's why we have the students, 30,000 students in Kit University from Pan India and from the 65 countries, though we are situated in the state like Odisha, we have the students. So it's also my pleasure to extend the thanks, gratitude to our past president, late Pradhanakishore Ball, and also the present president, Simati Saraswati Ball, 
for their all blessings and cooperation, everything. Similarly, our Vice President, Umapada Bos, and also Secretary, Mr. Aren Das, they are all the office bearer of the Kids Society. And for your kind information, Honorable <laughs> Chief Guest, I am not the member of Kit and Kids for your kind information. Legally, I am nothing. I am only founder. I have that much of confidence on my people. They are the office bearer, they are everything. I am not even member of Kit and Kids Society. I am only the founder. But they have been so good. That's why this organization is growing leaps and bounds every year. And similarly, it's my great pleasure uh, um, to extend my good wishes to my lovable Kitians, students, 30,000 students, and one lakh alumni, those who are present in the entire globe. I express my good wishes to them <laughs> because our students are very good. You will be happy to know that this is the most disciplined campus in the entire country, I can say. Accordingly, I am very much thankful to my 10,000 permanent staffs, those who are working day and night and brought kit up to these positions. They are also very good and very disciplined. So I give the entire credit of this entire growth and the uh, whatever the popularity, etc., to the entire students' community and also my 10,000 permanent staffs, those who are working day and night for the last so many years. Similarly, I am very much happy, thankful to my all the other stakeholders of KIT universities and also the o dedicated oil users and other oil users, those who always pray for KIT and KIS. You cannot believe, every day, there must be one million people praying for the good of KIT and KIS. One million people must be praying. Out of one million, half million tribal people, indigenous people, the, 60,000 students, 30,000 pass out and 30,000 in the campus. 60,000 students, their parents, their relatives, everybody pray for the goodness of, for good of kids and kids. That's why we are growing so nicely this entire year. And many uh, good things are also in KIT, but I should not take much time in telling because you are the, all the stakeholder of kids and kids sitting here. If I, you must be knowing much bigger than, better than me. And also, today we are happy the, our, our honorable chief guest visited 45 minutes the kit and kiss. So one glance is enough for him to judge what is what, where is where and when is where. So entire things. So still, uh, I am I'm very much happy to say just a few lines that our honorable chief guest is from the Nepal. His citizenship is Nepal. He is the country director but he is from the Nepal. Sir, you will be happy to know that now we have the students more than 1,300 in the campus now from the 64 countries, but we started getting students first from the Nepal. <laughs> from 99, 1999, 97 is the base year, we started getting students from the 99, 2000. And I have visited 55 countries. My first country visit is Nepal. And you, you will be happy to know that my entire things is taken care of by the Nepalese staff. I have four security persons in my house. They are Nepalese. My two personal staff, private secretary, they are Nepalese. So Nepal and Nepalese are so lucky to me, so good to all of us, and they are so good. We all know Nepalese are very good. And you also help from that country. That's why we also once again express our thanks to <coughs> you. And what more, lastly, conclusion is like this, that we are happy, uh, both kids and kids are tied up with all the UN agency, et cetera. Another one thing, if you see, both kids and kids as the true reflection of implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 2030. All the, most of the objectives of SDG are being fulfilled here, and particularly hunger, poverty, and many other things. So, that's why we are used to tell KIT is the community-based university. We have tremendous work in communities, people, etc. And at the same time, KIT is known as the University of Compassion and Humanitarian. During COVID-19 time, we extended very good support to the peoples in millions, etc. 
So that, that's why not only KIT is associated with many UN or organizations, KIT, not only the community-based university and also with human train and compassion, etc. But at the same time, KIT is also fulfilling the HDG goal in a very nice things. And there are many things um, I should speak uh, on this foundation day, but we are here all to listen to the our honorable guest. And finally, as our honorable guest is the, from the World Food Program, he will be happy to know that Odisha State is now progressing under the leadership of our honorable Chief Minister Navin Patnaik very nicely. Poverty level has reduced to 29 percent. And it will be zero, I hope, in the coming five years. Hunger is almost nil. And with respect to food production, it is the surplus state now. And third position in the entire country uh, with the production of food grains. And we are happy that in KISS, 1.2 lakh meals are being prepared every day for the 30,000 children and which is the biggest in the country in one place for the poor children. And that's why it is being highlighted in Discovery and the Geography Channel, et cetera. And directly, indirectly, as people say, because of kit-led growth, many things are there, kit-led growth. One part of Bhubaneswar has become the city. And we have calculated. It is approximately one million people every day as taking bread and butter because of kit. That is the uniqueness of this Foundation Day. That is the 18th Foundation Day. And many things are ahead also, we have to go. So once again, it's my, again, pleasure to extend the happiness and thanks to all the stakeholders of Kit and Kiss, connected directly and indirectly, particularly my lovable students, Kitians, those are pass out also alumni students. And particularly all the president, vice president, secretary, management members of Kit and Kiss Society, those who have allowed me to work freely. And particularly my all dedicated staff members, uh, both teaching and non-teaching, those are sitting here are connected virtually. They are really very good. They never speak ill of organizations or the founders, etc. That's why there is so much positivity in and around the Kit and Kiss. So once again, my special thanks to all of you. And if I have not taken anybody's name, I should be excused. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your welcoming words. Now, I request Honorable Founder KIIT and KISS, Dr. Ajito Samant, to kindly felicitate Mr. Bisho Parajuli, Representative and Country Director, World Food Program India. May I now request Honorable Mr. Bisho Parajuli to kindly felicitate Honorable Dr. Achito Samanta, 
member of parliament, Lok Sabha, and founder, KIIT and KISS. Thank you, sir, for the honor. May I have the privilege to welcome Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Bisho Parajuli, sir, who brings more than 35 years of distinguished experiences in development, humanitarian affairs, diplomacy, fundraising and management in over 10 countries in Asia, Middle East and Africa, including World Food Program Headquarters in Rome, to kindly give the Foundation Day Lecture. Please, sir. I guess I can take this out. I have to talk for 15 minutes, so, and then there is a distance here. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, how delighted I am uh, invited to be here and, and hugely honored and really extremely humbled uh, to, to deliver this lecture, uh, foundation lecture. I didn't know much about uh, Keat and Kiss University uh, until, let's say, a few months back. But when I visited the campus today, I had understood a little bit, I had read on the website, but when I visited it, I am so impressed and so delighted. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely glad that I came. I accepted the invitation. I want to really say a big gratitude and thank you for inviting me and, and introducing your university and all the fantastic job you have done, everybody is, together doing uh, in this campus. Um, so, uh, respected Dr. Achuta Samantha, honorable member of Lok Sabha and founder Kit and Kiss, Professor Dr. Sasmi Tarani Samantha, uh, Vice Chancellor Kit University, Professor Saranjit Singh, G. Pro Vice Chancellor Kitt University, all the faculty members, um, administration, uh, support guests, uh, students, alumni, uh, my colleagues who join me, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really uh, extremely delighted and, and humbled to be here. 
Uh, I want to first of all start by congratulating uh, the founding leader and all of you for the contribution uh, and foundation of this fantastic university. And, and, and a great achievement in this very short 25 years period. Uh, you know, I was just referring, I met somebody in the plane while coming uh, from Odisha and he said to me, he has been in the Central Secretariat for 26 years uh, in Delhi and he was visiting back home. Now, 26 years, that single person serving as a individual, various offices, etc., and compare that to the hero here, uh, creating this university, this, you know, huge structure, uh, really, I think uh, anyone could be absolutely, absolutely proud of this uh, achievement. Uh, and as you said uh, rightly, um, Hon Honorable Samantha, 25 years, a lot of energy, vibrant, uh, taking all the risk. When I first joined w uh, WFP as UN, I was 25 years old. Uh, I, I, I moved from Nepal, as was referred, to Botswana in Africa. Uh, I didn't know where it was. Uh, I looked at the map and then I never looked back uh, since then. It's been 10, 11 countries. Uh, by the end of last year's 37 years uh, of journey. So um, it is, I think it's that drive what you have put into this uh, institution. I, uh, I, think, I think you should be absolutely proud of this. Uh, um, I also want to say that uh, uh, there could be nothing better. He could have been maybe in the business or got a job or have a simple life, but uh, Professor Samantha took this uh, journey. And, and uh, as we say in Nepal, I don't know, maybe similarly in, uh, in India, uh, there could be no better thing than educational done, uh, the gift. Uh, and I think this is what you have done uh, by taking this route and path, uh, spreading knowledge, opportunities, enlightening, uh, creating jobs, eliminating poverty, development, and country's progress. Uh, I really want to pay a tribute by everybody standing to Professor Samantha for this. Uh, really, uh, I mean, this is not simple task. This is not simple task. Frankly, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing what you have done. And I think this also shows what is possible to do if one aims it, dedicates it, commits it, challenges the huddle and, 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 and move forward. I think you are a, you are a live example. Uh, so fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic. I am really confident that Keat will continue to excel in the next 25 years and 50 years uh, to be a really symbol producing top scientist, engineer, doctors, economists, whatever you are uh, putting. And as I said, there will be scientists, academicians at the Nobel Prize receiving and making India proud, kid proud, kids proud, and humanity proud. So I want to really wish well uh, to the kid and kids and, and indeed, uh, I am I'm extremely honored and grateful for inviting me to this lecture and, and for this opportunity. My own journey started uh, as a young 17-year-old student uh, in Punjab Agriculture University in Ludhiana. Uh, and four years I spent there and I spent two years in uh, Kurukshetra. So I have witnessed uh, the contribution uh, the, the scientific, higher scientific uh, institutions, university, 
uh, provide, and I've taken that in my life journey in development work, humanitarian work uh, around the world. Uh, and I think uh, it is not a simple task. Uh, uh, everyone who leaves campus uh, always remembers their professors. I still remember my professors. So each one of you should be really proud on what you are contributing to. Uh, uh, I would say this is not a job, this is a profession. This is a passion, this is a vocation, what you are uh, imparting. Uh, and of course, Professor Samantha has created this platform to impart that, but uh, uh, huge respect to all of you, uh, the faculty members, for your contribution and, and support uh, uh, and, and, and really helping change life of individual students and, and transforming uh, society uh, community, country, and the world. Uh, I take a pride and, and I talk when I am in different forum about, uh, you know, where I graduated from, Punjab Agriculture University, which laid me a, a real foundation in my, in my, in my path, uh, the management at Kurukshetra and, and further studies I did in England. Uh, indeed, uh, Indeed, and I have also witnessed, it's not only academics, but the element of scientific knowledge, uh, like for example, PAU did in the context of uh, bringing green evolution in India, uh, eliminating hunger from India. And, and, and you know, from a food dependent country, uh, from sheep to mouth to a food surplus country and an exporter. I mean, this transformation in last 50 years or, or so is a fantastic progress India has made because of institutions of higher studies like many agricultural universities and institutions like these which have emerged. So uh, really, I, I, I can just pay a huge uh, salute and tribute to all the contributions uh, you are making uh, as a as a academician, as a founder, as as professors, scientists. Uh, uh, I would, uh, in the next 10, 15 minutes, talk about a uh, number of issues, but basically focusing on sustainable development goal two, hunger. And, and the challenge the world's facing, uh, and how, how, and also pick up some lessons from India, and how possibly, uh, you know, the academic institutions like yours can contribute to transform that. Uh, and, and there is enormous role. Uh, the good part of it is uh, in, in the, you know, past many years, uh, there has been so much progress in terms of food production. The example of India, from 50 million tons to a 300 million tons now. Imagine the, 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 the growth which has taken. But it has not happened just only the scientific side, but of course, right policies, right intervention, finance, market, the whole supply chain system, uh, which has been brought uh, uh, to do that. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, uh, continuously helping to improve uh, life of the people through promoting production, uh, facilitating sale, market, access, and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, delivering it to the, to the, to the reaching, making it reach to the people. But of course, one thing we have to really note in this context just producing is not equal to availability for individuals. That's why we have problem in the world. It's not that there is not enough food. There is enough food, but people don't have the money to buy it, or it's not available uh, uh, because of various reasons. Uh, and, and, and therefore, that is the part of the challenge we need to work on uh, going forward. And there is the role 
for the states, the government, the institutions, uh, and then the science uh, to, to help transform with jobs, employment, knowledge, education, uh, technical know-how, uh, and the role of technical institutions like KIT, for example. Uh, really fantastic. Uh, uh, the 17 Sustainable Development Goal, I'm sure you are all familiar with. I mean, University KIT is a center of excellence. I want to really also congratulate you, uh, 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 Professor Shamanta, for adopting that center of excellence. And, 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 and really broadening that knowledge and looking it in a wholesome manner. Uh, uh, not just one part, but integrated manner. Um, a few months back, I was invited to address the Punjab Agriculture University. And I was na narrating my students' experience. And now, uh, there, uh, the point was, as a student, we never learn to 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 uh, uh, to to look at uh, uh, you know um, uh, how do we conserve water? How do we protect the environment? How do we make the world sustainable? How do we how do we have a sustainable system of farming? Uh, I was never taught that, uh, but I learn as I uh, start working uh, in the field, and as the world become more conscious. Uh, the concern of uh, climate change uh, and, and, uh, and also uh, the various other aspects we need to pay attention to, uh, not just production, the accessibility of it. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and indeed, now it's important to, 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 to think from that point of view. We have started thinking from it point of view. I was confirmed. Now, the other dimension of this is also availability of food is just not enough. We need nutritive food. We need, we need a composite food. We need, uh, uh, you know, protein, vitamin, calorie, minerals uh, for our wholesome growth uh, of the body and mind. And therefore, uh, uh, it's not enough just to eat rice and wheat. Uh, uh, or little dal, but varieties, diversification. So, uh, I mean, there is the science which says, uh, you know, the 80% the of the brain development of a child takes place before the age of two. And, and therefore, uh, uh, therefore, the time the child needed to be given ad enough nutrition, that period, the life cycle is important. Similarly, uh, there is uh, the need of right type of nutrition to a woman uh, if she is, uh, uh, you know, delivering uh, or pregnant or breastfeeding. So therefore, uh, therefore, the whole life cycle from uh, conception to uh, the two years of age, or we call it in a broad sense of thousand days, is fundamental. Looking at addressing these concerns. Uh, so it's not just supply, production, uh, but accessibility and adequacy of different component of the food. So when we talk about zero hunger, when we talk about sustainable development uh, uh, goals, SDG2, we look into these elements. Access of food every time as required for everybody Addressing concern of malnutrition, that is deficiency in micronutrient, vitamin, protein, so accessibility of all those things. And also there is a couple of other element is there is a concern of losses increasingly uh, on what we produce. Uh, so we need to also conserve that uh, and, and prevent it. Um, there is general expression uh, that over 20%, 25% uh, food is lost, what we produce and wasted. So imagine a quarter percentage is being lost. If we are able to preserve that and, uh, and reduce it, that gets delivered to uh, the people, then we have, we have more supplies available. And, and the challenge is the world population is growing. 
Um, and, and there is, as the economy grows, there is a demand for diversity in food, uh, the demand in certain countries uh, for, for uh, non-vegetarian uh, as well. So, so the requirement for uh, animal protein increases and there is the challenge of animal protein uh, to the environment uh, and maybe the consequence to the health as well uh, for consuming animals. Uh, so um, the example of in India, for example, uh, Punjab, Haryana, uh, you know, the production is enormous quantities. The growth is enormous, but they're also sucking in a lot of water from underneath. The water table has gone down so low, uh, it's, uh, uh, they have to go deeper and deeper uh, uh, to, to, to bring water. And, and this nature is not going to be there forever. So if we don't preserve it and protect it and conserve it, uh, our future generation will not have anything left. So uh, therefore, uh, the, the, the concern is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 uh, is how do we make the uh, world sustainable? Uh, conserve the nature, Mother Earth, while the Mother Earth is helping us to survive and sustain uh, is really fundamental. Um, now, food is basic, uh, and, and, and we presume uh, with so much production and science and technology, everybody has enough uh, to eat, and, uh, but very, very sadly, it's not true. Not everybody has enough to eat. Unfortunately, the hunger is rising. Uh, and, and sadly, the COVID pandemic, which has really put a huge threat uh, to the availability of food, uh, uh, the price increase, destruction in supply chain, uh, et cetera. And, 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 uh, and also, increasingly, there are concern of conflicts. You know, millions of people are displaced in some countries. Uh, you have seen the news of Syria, uh, Yemen, Afghanistan, for example, and many countries in Africa, Sudan, Central Africa, Republic, Congo. Uh, and, and, and therefore, the, the, the hunger is rising. And there is, the, the acute hunger is rising because of this. But there is also the adequacy of food uh, for a healthy life is, 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 is increasing, inadequacy is increasing. As a result, the current statistics is 811 million people don't have enough to eat before they go to bed. So this is a concern. And, and, and due to pandemic in the last two years, the population with acute hunger has increased from 130 million to 270 million, and, and, and uh, so um, huge challenge globally. Uh, you would remember uh, um, last year in September, the UN Secretary General convened uh, a food system summit where the head of the states were uh, uh, invited, uh, India was part of it, uh, and discussion about it, why, why this? Instead of uh, plenty of food production, we still have a challenge. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the deliberation brought a lot of uh, recommendations and suggestions uh, and, and, and um, identified problem. The reason is, um, as I said, we are producing, but we, there are people who do not have access to buy it. So either the government should help for them to support with, or, or, or there should be increase in income or employment for them to access, et cetera. So solving a problem there. Second is uh, sustainability. Uh, you know, the problem I referred about Punjab or many other areas where uh, excessive use of water and then, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, climate. Now, 
there is also the third component, which is also putting a threat to food, which is the whole element of climate change. In my over 35 years in 10 countries, I've seen in several countries, Zimbabwe, Botswana, uh, Myanmar, uh, even Bangladesh, the effects of climate change disrupting availability of food supply, uh, access to food, and farmers losing crops. You know, two, three years of con uh, continuous drought, imagine, for marginal farmer. That is a devastation. Uh, floods, uh, cyclone. I mean, uh, in Myanmar in 2008, I witnessed one of the worst cyclones killing 130,000 people uh, and, and displacing over 3 million. So this is real, the element of climate change. And that's why uh, the global leaders working together to reduce temperature uh, and, 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 and tamper the uh, climate change and also effort to adaptation, helping farmers to adapt. How do you, how do you change your traditional way of farming and uh, going towards uh, uh, diversification uh, resilient uh, uh, crops uh, and 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 also uh, you know science and research using less water varieties which needs uh, 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 not much water uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. so so this is a this is a this is a huge concern the climate change the uh, the temperature rise uh, uh, is extremely worrisome. I mean, we have witnessed in India, uh, you know, increased level of floods, uh, glacier melts, um, and, and, and in some areas, sea level rising. Uh, as a result, uh, villages, communities are being displaced. Uh, and, and guess what? Sadly, a lot of time when these things happen, it's the poorest people who suffer the most. The women and children, the vulnerable, become the victim. Uh, so therefore, uh, it's extremely important to look into these part uh, 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 going forward. And, uh, and, and indeed, it is making uh, uh, a threat uh, to humanity. Uh, and, and a lot of negotiation, uh, compromise, uh, to, 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 to preserve the environment. I was really humble and glad to hear like the campus is green, uh, neutral. Uh, you use solar power, uh, you use, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, various way to uh, conserve energy. And I think, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's all of us who have to, uh, you know, do our share of it to see how do we uh, contribute to that. Uh, uh, starting from uh, single-use polythene to, uh, to, to you know, preserving water, uh, conserving uh, rivers, uh, soil, uh, and, 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 and year. Increasingly uh, use of uh, electric vehicles, for example. Um, I tell you, we bought our, our car last year in Nepal, an electric car. The good part is I don't have to go to filling a station when everybody's queuing, and no money is spent. Uh, it's fantastic, frankly. Uh, and I was reading the other day, um, um, Niti Aayog, uh, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, tweeting, saying that uh, in by 30, maybe India, all new cars on the road 30% would be electric. That's a great news. But we all owe to that success. I think we all have to be a little bit bold uh, to, to make our choices in getting, uh, uh, making the right decisions. And, and I think there are various, the technology is advancing so much uh, that better and better, and, and just to give you reference to my own personal car, it takes 450 kilometers uh, in one charge. Uh, so it's not 100 kilometer or 200 kilometer and you have to bother. And, and increasingly now they have uh, coming up with the more, more of uh, um, the charging stations. Uh, 
so really uh, important. Now, I want to make a few reference uh, to India in the context of uh, food system and what's happening. I made reference to huge changes in production uh, and, and improvement uh, in that. Uh, but the good part also, I must say, is there is a system in terms of protecting the poor and vulnerable uh, with the Food Security Act and these three major programs, like public distribution program, midday meal program, and, and integrated child development program. Over a billion people are under this program in one way or the other. Uh, you know, I've visited many, many, uh, many um, fair price shops, and uh, I don't know what is the experience here. In fact, I have also been to, uh, uh, you know, some of these uh, places in, in, in Odisha itself, Bhuvaneshwar. The, uh, these, these, these programs have been a lifeline, especially during the last two years, this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, which provided additional food, five kilo to every household, has been a fantastic blessing. And, and I've also seen my colleagues and I, we have analyzed it. Uh, some of these states have come with the extra support and incentive, like Odisha. Uh, that's fantastic. I think it is very important for the government and the states uh, to, to support the vulnerable and needy at time of difficulties. Uh, and India's example is, is a good showcase for the world, I must say. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it is, we ha I have not seen like this in any countries I've worked. I've been into over 100 countries. Uh, okay, in developed countries, West, they have the social security. People don't have jobs, they are given cash and et cetera. But many countries, no. And they, therefore, World Food Program engages to provide food support. So happy that here, you know, our role is different. It's government takes care of it, and that's fantastic. And also, over the years, there is continuous effort to improve on the, uh, on the public distribution system in terms of targeting, uh, in terms of uh, delivery, uh, this biometric system, uh, the One Nation, One Card, for example, somebody from Bihar is here, can access, or somebody from Odisha is in Punjab, uh, can access the food ration. Uh, these, are, these, are, these are great initiative and, and efforts. Uh, uh, and, uh, and also during this whole COVID time, of course, the children could not get the meal in school. Uh, that was very unfortunate, but they had adopted it to give a take-home ration. Uh, and, and some states uh, did better than others. So I would say in the overall context, a uh, uh, lot of things are improving, but there are certain you know, pockets uh, in the area where there is still a huge concern of uh, poverty, uh, malnutrition, uh, and, and, and uh, still a hunger. Sadly, in the context of malnutrition, India is still so that the higher end of it because of these several states. And, and various efforts is being made to address that quite aggressively uh, and rightly so, like Prime Minister's initiative of uh, fortification of rice uh, uh, with vitamin and mineral, excellent steps. Uh, and, and that's implemented here in uh, Odisha as well. Um, and also, you know, increased quality of take-home rations, for example. Uh, we, we did some program in UP uh, and uh, pilot and best practice. In fact, the chief minister UP uh, liked it so much, he scaled up by 200 times. Uh, so we're hoping that that will also happen in, uh, in Odisha. So, you know, broadly, just to tell you, uh, working for the largest humanitarian organization, uh, World Food Program, and uh, our partnership and journey in India has shifted from a direct food support program uh, towards more technical assistance, demonstrating best practices, innovation, and, and working in uh, strengthening government efforts. Uh, because India is capable of doing things, it's doing it. And also, 
India is a good example to transfer to other countries in the world, uh, to the South in particular. And I think uh, um, I like that expression of, um, you know, looking after the uh, neighborhood and the whole world is one, uh, the Kutumba. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so, so this is, uh, uh, these are good example which is happening. Uh, and uh, so going forward, obviously, uh, Asia, India, concern of climate, increasing population. Uh, so improvement and maybe uh, push towards a second green revolution uh, uh, in, in, in the sense of looking for a sustainability, in a sense of adaptation, in a sense of mitigation, in a sense of creating more jobs uh, employment and, and, and income, so and access uh, while continuing to help uh, uh, people. Uh, so overall, in all these contexts, uh, um, um, I see the, the, the institution of higher education like Kit and Kiss is immense. Uh, and it could not have been the right time that you laid and brought this child to a 24 year, 25 year old adult. And, and really powerful and, 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 and I think, I think uh, uh, you know, India is marking, uh, uh, really marching towards really great progress in many fronts uh, and, and institutions of excellence like these uh, have an immense role to play and I've witnessed that uh, myself, uh, benefited from it. Uh, I have my uh, ever gratitude for that knowledge and I got here. Uh, and and I, I, I'm so happy to hear you have many students from different countries. Uh, thank you for accommodating them. And, and thank you for supporting them. And thank you for being a global citizen to contribute uh, to the development of the goal to address hunger and, and, and uh, enlighten uh, uh, citizens of the world. I think that's what uh, we need to look at it as a humanity. Uh, the world is one. Uh, and and uh, we have seen it during the time of COVID. You know, little virus from Wuhan is spread all over the world. Look at the pain and suffering it caused, correct? So if we don't eliminate hunger and poverty, it breeds dissatisfaction, it creates tension, it, uh, you know, there is an expression in Africa, uh, hungry man is an angry man. Uh, so, so it's important, uh, uh, I think, I think uh, to, to, to see this uh, from a broad point of view. So just two, three messages for the university uh, uh, research and development, really important. Uh, I think, and investing in that, uh, laying a foundation uh, to harness a little bit further. I think it's really, uh, uh, I mean, I don't need to stress that, uh, very important. Uh, looking from a sustainable uh, point of view, not harnessing benefit now, but harnessing benefit forever protecting the environment, protecting the mother earth uh, is, is, is really fundamental. And also I think it's also in our culture, right? Uh, we always uh, uh, see that. Uh, role of private sector uh, is really fundamental. We need everyone for development uh, and support uh, and, and cooperation. Uh, their investment into research is important. Uh, and, and uh, and we have seen it during this COVID time. During one year, they brought this vaccine. Uh, although some companies maybe making lots of money and profit, I was reading somewhere, you know, Pfizer uh, making billions and et cetera, but, uh, uh, but uh, our lives, is sa lives are saved because of vaccine. Uh, so gratitude to that science and, you know, pharmaceutical who have helped that uh, uh, producing. Um, and I'm hoping the university creates new generation of scientists. Uh, science, uh, 
Mm? Gender equality. Uh, both girls and boys have opportunities. Uh, and, and creating that space uh, is really fundamental. Uh, in fact, unless we stress on uh, equality in the society, then it gets not balanced. So therefore, creating opportunity for girls, uh, underprivileged community, I'm so glad to hear you have a tribal children here, leaving no one behind, really fantastic. Uh, it is, it is, it's wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful to see that. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, you know, food is basic. Uh, and it's human right. And it is, we are born and we're supposed to have food and etc. So somehow that element must be addressed in, in whatever way, and, and therefore, uh, you know, uh, importance of that is uh, immense. Uh, two last messages uh, I have to share, but this is more to also to students. Uh, if you're listening online, uh, thank you for being there. To say that we must withhold our values. Integrity, commitment, collaboration, and humanity is fundamental to everything we do. Unless we have a human face, uh, then we are not human. You know, the God has given us the human life and we must demonstrate that with humanity. Uh, so we must all remember that uh, uh, part and, and demonstrate it by accent and communication. Not enough that I have a high integrity, etc., but so it, do it, deliver it. Second is engaging with communities, neighborhood to help each other, so you care and support and protect the environment. That's really fundamental at the end of the day because we have only one earth. If this earth gets destroyed, where do we go? We can't. So it's really important. And in this context, I just want to also say that you would all remember, probably know, heard, there is a 16-year-old, now she's 17 maybe, a Swedish climate environment activist. Her name is Greta Thunberg, who started protesting um, as a Friday march in front of the parliament, Sweden, in the cold snow winter as a single little tiny girl outside the parliament. She has five million followers now. And she's a champion uh, advocating to protect our environment. Uh, so here is an example, professor. He started as one individual, 25 year old with $100. This is a billion dollar institution with 10,000 staff. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring words. The lady with ultimate voice and dominance who has always been the trail of light with utmost dignity and perfection May I now request Honorable Vice Chancellor KIIT Professor Sasmita Samantha Ma'am to kindly give the presidential address. Please, Ma'am. Very good afternoon. Most Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Biso Parajuli, the representative and country director of United Nations World Food Program. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Kate and Kes, Professor Dr. Achyutananda Saman, sir, respected Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Singh, respected Register Professor Mohanty, all the respected dignitaries from World Food Program, United Nations, invited guests, all the respected academic and administrative functionaries of KIIT and KISS present here respected persons from press and media. 
At the outset, I would like to wish the Happy Foundation Day of CAT to each one of us. I would like to say here that, of course, all the institutions, organizations, they all celebrate the Foundation Day. And people get proud of that. That is, we owe to this institution or we are connected to this great institution. But here, the each one of the members present, here, present, all of them owe to the institution that we are the part of this great process. The process of foundation, process of growth of this great institution, that pride itself creates the resilience, it creates the sense of commitment. It creates the sense of attachment for a, for a particular purpose. And slowly, that purpose has become the goal for each one of the individual in the premises of Ket and Kes. And today, that commitment, that passion, that attachment has brought all the laurels, not only to the institution, but each one of us. When one institution starts, when any organization starts, any concept starts, any system starts, it goes through different phases. And in this world, always we all discuss sometimes that the business has connected the world. Sometimes we think that the sports activities has connected this world. Sometimes we think or we imagine that education is the instrument to connect to the world. But if we keenly observe, apart from those things, what we see, what we realize, one thing has connected the world, that is the human imagination, the thoughts, the intellects, the knowledge. And that imagination creates the resilience, it creates the relationship, it creates the purpose for the human being to lead. And such imagination becomes the instrument for the establishment of great institution. And the journey from imagination up to the foundation, that's the journey always made by a single person, the person who finds the institution. We are very fortunate today that we are having our honorable founder who has already taken the journey, who has taken the pain of that journey from imagination off to the foundation of KET and off to the foundation of this university, I can say that single-handedly, or in his thoughts and with his strong determination and passion for the purpose. And we all congratulate him and we all show our deep sense of gratitude to him that he has taken the pain of that journey from imagination to foundation. Just now we are listening to Honorable Mr. Bishop Parajuli, who was describing about World Food Program, how this earth is important, how humanity is important in this globe, and what should be the purpose to live, and what should be the mission to live. And through that uh, journey, you are trying to explain each one of us that through that journey, how we should contribute, how much we should be connected. But in this university, I would like to say that journey started in 1997 in the name of KET and committed when it com got committed to contribute for the higher education, that journey not only started in 1997 with the purpose, with the rigor with it for the survival, but that journey with 
that journey started with the concept, with the vision of excellence. And that journey of excellence was recognized as the university in the year 2004, 16th of February, as the KIT University itself. And that day, the 16th February 2004, has given the different direction, not only to this institution KIT, but each one of the members connected to this. Perhaps that day has transformed not only the lives, but life goals of each one of us present here in this uh, auditorium itself or in the campuses of Kate and Kes itself. And with that power, the day had given us the power, recognition, the respect, dignity, that day had given us, perhaps we have utilized that power very judiciously under the leadership of our honorable founder, and as a result of which, Kate and Kes is showing the world the power of positivity, power of commitment, power of compassion, power of, com power of community building, and showing the way that how to contribute for building of generations and building of the humanity. And I hope that each one of us present here, we all will be contributing with same spirit, with same commitment, with same rigor in future to take, not only to take this university to next level, but also to contribute for the humanity with, uh, by adding more and more values and by achieving a lot for the generations. This year, we all are celebrating 25 years of establishment of Kate and Kiss, and in that celebration, if we keenly observe in the way we all are preparing ourselves, of course, lots of legacies we have created in the past. The institution which was established in 1997, which was converted to the university in 2004, and which was converted to Institute of Eminence just two years back, and to which the institution we all are passionately connected. Maybe that institution will be the symbol of icon in education in the globe. And I see that spark in the eyes of each one of the member of Kate and Kes family, and each one of the students, those who are studying here. While we talk about the resilience, while we talk about the human dignity, we find that today in this campus, we are having students from 52 countries. We are having, st already the students from different countries have passed out, and we are very fortunate that only within this 25 years, we are able to attract students from more than 60 countries in the campus itself. And our students, those who have already passed out from this campus, they are working in 70 countries, which can be the better place of, or the iconic, better iconic place where the globalization, the peace, the global resilience, resilience of humanity exist. Perhaps it has become the part of our lives where we have developed the ecosystem to observe the culture of this world with all the diversities. We have learned to respect the humanity with all its differences in his opinions and belief, and we all have created that world, and we have got a leader which is having strong vision, strong commitment, strong passion to build the humanity, build the next generation, and giving the directions to the generation to achieve the purpose and to lead the life with dignity and meaningful way. And I hope that each one of us present today on this Foundation Day should be committed to achieve more and more and contribute more and more for the humanity and for the globe and be committed for our country, for our activities, whatever we are doing for the betterment of the world, betterment of the globe, and as a result of which 
maybe each one of us will be identifying ourselves as a global citizen as professor biso uh, uh, respected biso was saying here itself that he was saying that our honorable founder is a global citizen i can say here that the culture developed in khet gives the courage gives the power each one of the individual in the campus to act as the global citizen and that's the reason why today our faculty members are working with the people academia academia industrialist working in 60 different countries around the globe that courage has been derived from that strong vision our students are working in 70 countries our our students are from different countries from around the globe and i hope that with that strong vision with that commitment we will be achieving a lot and all the best we hope that as though this covid-19 pandemic has created lots of disruptions in the globe lots of people have lost their job many people are struggling for survival in this earth many things have happened which was unimaginable which was not supposed to happen then also in last two years our strong commitment strong will power has given us reasons to celebrate we have become world's best 800 universities in last two years our engineering program has come within 500 in world higher education ranking and many more plans strategies have been made as such as this university can work with more rigor and create more impact in this globe and thank you and all the best once again happy founder sunday to each one of us and hope we'll be celebrating with more energy next year thank you all thank you so much ma'am for your kind words thank you madam and uh, very good afternoon to one and all and uh, it's my profound privilege here to express the vote of thanks uh, on this occasion a very proud moment for all of us but uh, i like to say a few lines uh, before i uh, officially give our vote of thanks uh, a vedic mantra which we have been uh, talking about and i have been also personally been following is uh, ano bhadra kartavya yantu vishwata it basically means let the noble thought come from everywhere and that is what i also personally believe being a faculty being a teacher from last 20 25 years all the august teachers and faculty members who are here including all the staffs uh, uh, on this 18th version of our foundation day celebrations i think we must uh, uh, make a resolution that we should not live in day tight compartments and let the noble thoughts come from everyone everywhere and let be the lifelong learner and thinker so with this i uh, express my uh, deepest thanks to the today's chief guest esteem mr bishoy parajuli sir for gracing this occasion thank you for coming to kit sir and kiss and uh, personally i have been been following you sir since last couple of days when i came to know that you have been coming to kit and i came to know that you are one of the torch bearers for green revolution version 2.0 so i am sure uh, there are a lot of synergies which can come into picture between kit kss and uh, un world uh, food program under your leadership in india and uh, we must uh, definitely will look into what are those areas where we can join hand together so under this mou which you are signing or the, the the intent which we are signing in days to come i also personally thank our very honorable founder sir uh, samanta sir Uh, samanta sir you sir have sown the seeds uh, some 1992 and today we are now sitting in a wonderful auditorium in such a beautiful spread campus and uh, celebrating the 25 years of uh, engineering existence the silver jubilee year currently and the 18th version of foundation day uh, you are one of the leader who has not only been like a prerna to all of us where we have been using our left brain because most of the scientists and engineers and technocrats here are also on the right side of the brain so thank you for building this institution of humanity compassion love 
everything, everything. We love you, sir. Thank you for this momentous occasion. I personally thank our esteemed leader, uh, Vice Chancellor, Madam, uh, Professor Shashmita Samantha, Ma'am. Uh, we have been hearing, Ma'am, and she has been stressing on the sustainable uh, development side of whatever we have been doing at KIT, whether it is a hard sciences or engineering sciences or managerial sciences. And she has been talking about that uh, whenever we discuss anything, she always says, he, what is the implication of this as far as the society is concerned, how you are going to help the society. So I think this is an occasion probably, ma'am, where we can relate why you have been saying this. So under your leadership, probably definitely we look forward to a, a, a newer and a higher version of KIT in next 15, 20 years, which I was saying in the last faculty meet also. Thank you, madam, for coming and gracing this occasion. I also thank our esteemed colleague and uh, Professor Gyano, uh, who is the registrar of this university for uh, standing along with us on all the occasions and guiding us and uh, being part of this successful Foundation Day, Foundation Day lecture as well as the program. I would like to thank all these team members coming from WFP who are sitting here on the, off the dais. Uh, thank you for coming to KIT and KISS and gracing this occasion. Uh, sir has mentioned we have got Volleyball Federation of India August. Uh, people also from here, CEO and uh, general secretaries and other office peers, thank you for gracing this occasion and coming to KIT. We thank, we thank all the wishers, all the team uh, guests of the today's program as well as all the faculty members, staffs, and everyone who has contributed since the inception of KIT and KISIS in last, uh, starting from 1992 till today, or probably will be joining hands in future as well, plus our students who are pursuing educations, as well as our alumnus, uh, alumnus who have contributed immensely to the kit and kids growth. So thank you all for everyone, and probably after this, there has been a notification that we have to go to uh, the puja place and probably once we are done with the program we will proceed there. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. The meeting is over now. Basantu, Basantu, Uthanduni, Uthanduni, please. Oh. We have another one functions, but we know you are totally bored, and we have many things to do on this foundation day. There is, because on every foundation day, we only do great haban. And the haban purnavati will be completed at 1.30 PM. So staffs, those who are interested, they can join at Campus 3. And every staff should have Lodu, which we are used to do every year. So we have cursed the second functions. We both had agreed, our Honorable Mr. Bisho Parajuli and myself, only sign the MOU, no functions, no speech. But on this occasion, I request the Vice Chancellor of Keys University, Professor Deepak Kumar Behra, to grace the occasion on the dash. And so also, our respected Mr. Tejinder Singh Chandhu, retired IS, with 17 years experience in bureaucracy as an IS officer and 27 years experience in UNICEF in the entire globe, different countries. Now he is the chairman of the advisory committee of UN Affairs, KISS. So I request also, Cody. Oh yeah, he's, so he should give, and also our Mr. Suraj Kumarji, senior advisor, having more than 35 years experience in developmental work. So good to grace the occasion. Just we'll sign the MOU and these functions will be ended. No speech, nothing else from anybody else. So because <laughs> we have already spoken everything, so I should be excused by VC, Keys and others that we should not repeat the same, that rather we should just sign this MOU or letter of intent, that is the letter of intent. Thank you very much.
So thank you very much. Now this today's program ends. Those who are interested to join in Campus 3, they can join at SARP 130.